Okay. It has got also other names, no? Yesterday we thought. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday we thought uh, we also told that dispersion model. It is also called axial dispersion model. Okay. It is also called uh, plug flow with dispersion. There are so many things. Axial mixing. All these names are uh, given for uh, uh, dispersion model. So in general, when you have uh, this RTD models, we can have a small scale just to have an idea what kind of models we are going to use. This just an analytical scale where we have this end P f, this end you have M f. Okay. So, the dispersion model and tanks in series model normally it is not exact, but you know somehow approximate distance you can see. So, this is the distance between which you use dispersion model. dispersion model or tanks in series model. Okay. So, this end normally we call them as recirculation models. Right. Okay. So, in between we have uh, what are called uh, compartment models. Okay. So, compartment models meaning is that we have plug flow and parallel to that you can put a mixed flow and you can put two parallel uh, plug flows. When do you use that? Two parallel plug flows. When you have channeling, okay, channeling. See, one channel is plug flow, another channel also is plug flow. So two uh, two plug flows in parallel. If you put, okay. No, you are talking about reactors. So what I am talking is that once you have the tracer data, so depending on the type of response you get, you know the type of uh, curve you get. But yesterday only we saw that, right? Various uh, types. So depending on the types, you have to choose what are the models, right? And you know very well that when you are near plug flow, you will get that axial dispersion beautifully like this. So, that means here either you can use a dispersion model or tax in series model. Okay. Or otherwise, in between, we do not know, I think like uh, dead space is there, then you add CSTR or mixed flow, oh, sorry, okay, no, both are same, plug flow with dead space, right, or, uh, or plug flow, and then parallelly to that dead space, all kinds of models one has to try. right? And you will try the correct model if you have good physical sense, what is really happening in the reactor. It is only one reactor, only thing is you are imagining, like you know, we have the stomach and the, our digestive system, someone was asking. You know. So, our digestive system can be modeled with uh, mixed flow and also followed by plug flow. So, all that, I mean we have only one digestive system. So, similarly, reactor is only one. But looking at that, uh, the response curves, then you will think that okay, this may be a combination of two CSTRs in series, depending on the type. So that means you have to now take two, TS, uh, two CSTRs in series, write the equation, tracer equation, how much concentration is entering. The procedure is universal, approach is same, right? So write the concentration versus uh, time, uh, you know, that, that model, like uh, how much is entering tracer, how much is leaving. So you will get a differential equation and you have to solve that, that will become a concentration as a function of time. Concentration as a function, because it is unsteady state. Tracer is always unsteady state. You are just giving a pulse input and then uh, with respect to time slowly, it may increase or decrease or continuously decrease depending on uh, mixed flow for example. right? Though, and you have to write the corresponding equations, what is entering, what is leaving and once you have concentration versus time, some equation because you are having a differential equation, you are solving it. After solving that, you are now having C versus T information as a equation. How do you find out E T? E T definition wise C by 
Yeah, zero to infinity C T G T T. Right. So you have an equation for C. You have an equation for C. Right. So that C equation you substitute there. The simplest equation what you can see if uh, if you are trying for mixed flow pulse input pulse input. So procedure is same. Again you are writing what is entering, what is leaving, but only thing is input is zero after some time because you know pulse input only at time t equal to zero you add and then start analyzing at the outlet. So input is zero, output is V into C and accumulation is because it is unsteady state, there is no reaction plus V D C by D T. So zero equal to V C plus V D C by D T that is the equation you have to solve and corresponding boundary condition you have to take. So you equation what you get for that is C equal to C naught into T bar. That is the equation. Now you have to substitute E T equal to that C, C equal to C naught by E power minus T by T bar divided by integral 0 to infinity C D T. That C is again C naught E power minus T by T bar D T. That is all. So the, the approach is same, the procedure is universal. So only thing is uh, if it is not uh, um, uh, ideal CSTR or ideal mixed flow, if it is dispersed for uh, plug flow, you will get more complicated differential equation, which will give you more complicated C versus time equation. The simplest one is C equal to C naught into E power minus uh, uh, T by T bar is the one for mixed flow reactor. So any complicated, uh, what do you do now for uh, uh, yeah, this compartment model C is that you assume many things like you know you have a one uh, CSTR and also parallel to that plug flow. Plug flow will come as a direct delta function, ideal. So CSTR will have that. So now write the material balance for both. I mean you should know what is the flow split, how much is going through plug flow, how much is going through CSTR, that is also a parameter. You start with V1 and V2, volumetric flow rate 1 and volumetric flow, uh, flow rate 2, that is also a parameter for modeling the reactors. That is one parameter. Right. So, because you do not know, it is only black box, you know that you are, uh, you are sending 100 liters per minute. Out of 100 liters per minute, how much is going through this plug flow section, where there is a pipe which is simply coming out okay, in a tank for example, we do not know, I mean just imagination. Right. The other one is maybe perfectly mixing, that is parallel, you take PFR, uh, ideal PFR as parallel and uh, to that CSTR. So, now you write in this both what is entering and at the end what is coming again you know both both have to be combined and write the material balance you get C versus T data equation and that equation convert to E T okay? and you know how to convert E T into E theta if you want to convert as uh, you know uh, dimensionless, dimensionless right. So that is the overall approach that is why I think I am taking more time only because of those reasons you know that approach, approach is more important than doing individual problems. Once you understand this approach because this is universal, like I told you reactor design, what is the information needed? Only the kinetics and contacting that is all and you know how to choose contacting and you know how to find out kinetics that is all. Even next semester also uh, the uh, chemical and catalytic uh, heterogeneous systems also the approach is same. But there the methods are different because you have number of phases, you may have two phases, three phases. right? So that is why uh, approach is universal for us either in this one or in, in any subject you know that is why in any subject first of all approach should be mentioned and at least you remember the approach, you do not have to remember the individual details of uh, equations how to derive and all that if you do not want to. right? But approach you should not forget any time and approach is the one which is asked in interviews. Okay? That is the approach which we ask always in approach, okay, I have to design a batch reactor, what is the procedure we will ask? What is the approach? Okay. I have a system coal combustion, how do I find out kinetics? So I do not ask what is the temperature, what is the exact uh, activation energy or what is the order of reaction, those things we do not ask. What we ask is, okay, I have coal combustion, you know, I have to find out kinetics. So then tell me what is the approach, how do I proceed? If you are able to tell that, I think you will definitely get the jobs. So even here it is same thing. So we have the, uh, the this is the flow scale we say entire thing. Our flow, our uh, flow scale is not like our laminar or turbulent, but this flow scale is from PF to MF. 
mixed flow to plug flow right so in between you have very near to plug flow you use this model very uh, close to um, mixed flow and here also in this recirculating machine is a general model i mean uh, general name but at this point when i have a single tank i may have to use for example dead space and uh, depending on the type of uh, response i get so normal approach is first conduct rtd experiment right because otherwise how do you imagine you don't know there are so many possibilities and at, by looking at that okay dead space will be something like this or bypass will be something like that that means i am talking about this area mixed flow yesterday we have seen some curves so when i have that kind of bypass suddenly a sudden peak will go and then afterwards it is slowly coming out or otherwise you are you know you are long tail in fact uh, mixed flow also will have a very long tail so what is the time required for the tracer to come out theoretically speaking infinity because et is e power minus t by t bar by t bar so that has to become zero or ft 1 minus e power minus t by t bar okay so ft to become 1 then only all tracer should have come out so that e power minus t by t bar t must be infinity right but infinite time we cannot wait so it has got long but the the, the way the tail moves in the ideal cstr is totally different than when compared to if you have dead space and then slowly tail moving that you should be able to identify it is exactly like doctors a very good doctor by looking at your face itself will tell that you are sick okay and by touching he will tell where you are sick which part of the body is sick correct no so like that if you are a very good chemical engineer but just by looking at the yeah the the, the graph itself you know that rtd response curve itself you can find out okay this fellow has this disease right and then you can estimate the yeah the idea of uh, this rtd models is to estimate those non idealistic like actual mixing how much is that we it will only tell you that you know there is a actual mixing but how much dead space for example in mixed flow right or uh, yeah if there is a dead space i would like to find out how much of is actually dead space is it 10% of the volume or 20% of the volume if the volume is uh, let us say 50 liters maybe 10 liters may be dead space that means the mixing is not proper there right so and also bypass bypass you are sending 100 liters per minute so out of that how many liters is really bypassing bypassing means almost that fraction of material is not spending any time inside the reactor you will find out that that means that portion is totally removed from your calculations because that fellow is unnecessarily just uh, bypassing and then mixing with the already converted products the other portion goes to mixed flow right you know when you have bypass bypass comes without spending any time almost without spending any time in the reactor the other portion is getting mixed and getting reacted so now these two will again combine together and will you will get less conversion that is the problem but you should definitely identify uh, how much is the bypass and if you really identify that okay 50% is bypass then you have to now take the necessary steps to correct that like medicine giving correct no after identifying the disease you ought also give the medicine right so if there is a dead space what do you do 10 liters dead space is there in a mixed flow reactor what do you do ha huh? yeah either baffles or stirring okay baffles may not improve that much because of the baffles in fact if you put more baffles you will have more dead space right so baffles will not solve the problem everything baffles only will uh, eliminate you know that uh, vortex mix yeah breaking of vortex so like that again otherwise you will give the wrong medicine correct no this is a wrong medicine for for dead space baffles is not the solution okay yeah sorry yeah you know you, you, you see you have already designed the reactor okay so then only you took the rtd test whether your assumption of perfect mixing is right or wrong and that says some dead space so again you cannot design another reactor fabricate and then throw this out so best thing is changing the stirrer which is easier okay so that's how what you do like for example when you have uh, uh, this channeling in uh, packet beds uh, plug flow what do you do you will try to find out in which corner that channeling is happening right and then you open the reactor and if it's a packet bed and then see that whether packing is proper or not if the packing is not proper 
wherever there is less packing more amount of gas will go or more amount of liquid will come out that is channeling that is why what you do is you, you open see that and uh, again put all the particles uniformly and put one distributor plate on the top another distributor plate on the bottom and uniformly uh, uniform uh, packing and then start again doing it in fact uh, uh, there are cases where in industry they found it the packet bed has been designed for 80 percent conversion or so i think fagler book has given that example okay that uh, reference also so then uh, it was giving around 60 65 percent conversion right then they found that uh, there must be something wrong they conducted an rtd test rtd graph also is given it gave two peaks Okay. So, then definitely they know that it is channeling. Then when they opened and saw the same mistake they have done, what they have done was that uh, they have not filled up, uh, okay. this is the packet bed, there is another uh, distributor plate on the top, they have not filled up, you know it was not completely filled from this point to this point, it was only till yeah, when they opened they found that kind of packing, that is packing. So, happily this fellow was going like this, short road, least resistance that we know as students, very happy I think if there is a class without reading, without doing anything, if you are able to get uh, yes Swami, that, <laughs> that is the short circuiting, okay? that is channeling, because you do not have to work, it is not normal uh, stream, so go there, sit and get yes without doing anything. The same thing here, fluid also, because all of us behave on this planet exactly same monkeys also behave like us and elephants also behave like us, many things will behave like exactly, even trees behave uh, like us, but only thing is we do not know, we are not able to find, right, good, okay. So, that is how afterwards they put out, you know, I think maybe like this they have brought it down and then arranged, because during startup what happened was they put initially something like this, okay, but the mistake is that they have to completely fill up, only half of that they filled up, right. So, during startup what happened was sudden pressure drop and all that, it pushed the packing to one side, then the other side became short circuit, okay, channeling. So, that is what happened. So, like that I think even industry also one can find out, like doctors very happily just go and conduct an exam, uh, uh, some uh, test or otherwise you ask your uh, other uh, mechanics to do the test and they bring the curve to you and then looking at the curve, you, are, you should be able to tell this is the disease and this is also the medicine medicine also we should give, right. So, that is the overall picture for RTD models. In all these models, any model the procedure is same. What is that? Conducting an experiment and then getting an idea like that okay, long tail or dead space, how it behaves or two chan, uh, parallel paths, what kind of curve you get. So, now when I have two parallel paths, then I should imagine the okay, two PFRs okay, or maybe two CSTRs also in series how the response curve comes. I will give you some uh, handout later for various uh, models. So, looking at them will give you an idea. So, what is really happening? So, then uh, uh, you have to go to mathematics, you write the uh, model equations for that. Normally, model equation is written only for concentration, not normally always. So, then that concentration has to be converted to E t, right. And then now, uh, when you are writing the model itself, then you will have some parameters like dead space should be there, channeling will be there as a parameter. And now you test this experimental data with the model and estimate now what is the amount of channeling, what is the amount of dead space, what is the amount of uh, you know that uh, what else, yeah, recirculations all that, right. So, that is the overall picture. So, models will give me the quantification of non ideality. So, what we take now is the simplest models, right? one parameter model is the simplest model and uh, those things we try to understand and uh, for uh, multi parameter model one or two uh, only one we will do, just I will tell you the procedure, but that is extendable to any kind of multi parameter models. Okay, good. Please take uh, this uh, okay, dispersion model. Yeah, I mean we know that in dispersion model diffusion is main important criteria, right? That too in the axial direction. So, when I have a plug flow reactor something like this and what I expect is a flat velocity profile, but over which we have this kind of disturbance, okay? this is called axial mixing. That is why I told you 
if I imagine that we have uh, this disk coming in and then disk going out, right? If it is ideal plug flow, the disk will not be disturbed at all anywhere. But if it is not ideal, then here uh, at the entry you will have okay. At the entry you will have almost that direct delta function, the disk as it is, and here you may have. Yeah, like this, it will be normally Gaussian. Okay, and at this point, you may have the peak will not be that much. Yeah, you see now this is this is peak, top, and then it is slightly spread. This is slightly spread. If I go further, this may still further spread. So, like that, you will have the tracer coming out. So, this is at the outlet. Yeah. So, that is the kind of spread. Correct, no? Yeah. So, that is why you know uh, intelligent people in this RTD studies, what they do is uh, there is no ideal direct delta function anywhere. Because, how can you inject a tracer with zero time? Because as per the definition of a direct delta function, what is the thickness of the pulse? Zero, right? You can never inject. They, they definitely, in the zero time, you cannot. There will be definitely some finite time. It may be 0 0 0 0 0 one second, but still that is a time, right? So that is why what they do is somewhere here they take, somewhere here they take. I mean, at the outlet, of course, they can take. That means it spread already a little bit here. Okay. Yeah. So, they use what is called deconvolution. I do not know whether you heard of this name. Deconvolution. Right? The deconvolution tells me that that means I am subtracting this distribution from this distribution. Right? So, that will tell me exactly what is the kind of mixing that is there inside the reactor. That is why test section alone, in fact, we have also done. Ranganathan has done for his PhD work with me this kind of work, you know. So we also do. I mean, no one knows how to exactly put the pulse. So we allowed some distance and measured there, and at the outlet measured and deconvoluted, you will get beautiful curves. Again, if it is a small axial mixing, very very Gaussian curves you get. If it's not ideal mixing, then if there is some kind of more uh, uh, axial mixing is supposed to be very very small. If you have a large axial mixing, you will have a problem again. The curve will get skewed. That means, you will get like this. You know, this is, this is skewed. That means, more this side, yeah, spread. Okay? So, that is the kind of curves what we get. Good. So, and uh, the, the, this spread, this spread is characterized by, characterized by what is called dispersion number or diffusivity. Okay? Yes. Okay. Good. Please take this. Okay. The assumption underlying the dispersion model is that of a diffusion like process. Full stop. Here fluid elements move at different speeds for a short while, comma, then redistribute themselves, comma, take on a different speed and so on many, many times. The key, the key is the random rearrangement of particles and a continual forgetting of the past. Okay? That is a nice uh, sentence, you know, forgetting, uh, forgetting of the past. Okay? If you do not know that you are there on that point, right? so the, again you may end up there. That is why the drunkard uh, path, I think uh, people try to model uh, the walking of a drunkard, uh, a drunkard uh, uh, random walk model. Yeah, finally they found that wherever you go, you will come back to the same spot <laughs> where you started. <laughs> where you started because no remembering of the past. So that's why he does not know where he started and where he is ending. So he goes like this, like this, like this, and comes back and stays in the original place. That also without knowing. That also he does not know that that is the original place. Okay. So I think there are many, many things. I think there are wonderful uh, things like this. There was also a question when it's raining. If you run, you will get more wet. 
or if you walk you will get more weight don't answer go and see the websites <laughs> no really very good you know these are basic fundamental questions what every day we see okay if i remember correctly i think you know if you walk you will get uh, no if you run you will get more uh, weight yeah so that's why better walk okay abdul no running don't increase the speed of your uh, motorbike <laughs> okay anyway so like that there are so many wonderful things which are just around gopi right yeah but we don't really you know care uh, to notice that there are so many wonderful things okay good yeah uh, please take the next one the dispersion coefficient or diffusion coefficient or axial diffusion coefficient these are the names you know or axial diffusion coefficient d d capital d represents the spreading process capital d okay d large means rapid spreading of course d small means slow spreading d zero means no spreading plug flow very good no spreading pf right yeah so the parameter which uh, of course d is one of the parameters but the characteristic uh, dimensionless number what we use here is the the dispersion number d by ul d by u l where d is the diffusivity u is the velocity and l is the length of what length of the reactor if it is empty tube okay yeah so if it is a packet bed then we will also we can also define d by u d p into d p by l that is also d by u l but there are two geometric parameter is one okay and you have actual d by you know that that uh, mixing group good so this is the one and d by ul zero means okay this is also d by ul or you also have another group ul by d just reverse of it you know what it is called packet number already i think i told some time back okay right this is d by u l is dispersion number dispersion number and this is called peclet number peclet number it's called okay good okay so u d by u l equal to 0 I, i should not write that now now i will write d by u l equal to 0 also equal to uh, okay this is p of correspondingly peclet number equal to infinity for p of for m of d by ul equal to infinity and peclet number equal to zero okay so these are the extremes what we have good so what we do is at in this one i think now let us write the uh, material balance quickly and uh, here i will take a small element tracer entering tracer leaving tracer reacting there is no tracer reaction and only tracer accumulated so when we write that i am not explaining quickly i think we will do that ah one, one just one thing i want to tell you here is this d is not alone molecular diffusion it is not molecular diffusion then what else yeah because of convection also there will be disturbance there will be mixing all that put together it is called 
dispersion number. That is not equivalent to your simple molecular uh, uh, dispersion d, where you have some equations to calculate d. But here, depending on the flow structure, you have to always find out from the experiment. Out of that, out of that d, some may be molecular diffusion and some may be convective diffusion. That is why sometimes it is also called effective diffusivity coefficient. D e is called effective diffusivity coefficient. Effective diffusivity. Yeah. So there are so many things I say. That's why, in fact, uh, this effective diffusivity again will be a different effective diffusivity when compared to diffusion through catalytic particle. This is inside the reactor. When the flow is there, molecules will be moving faster by, by nature because by dispersion, by by molecular diffusion. But again, this kind of mixing, some molecules will be thrown forward, backward, and all that, right? Because of the flow. So both together, we are calling it as effective diffusivity. Now, if I take a single catalyst particle, there are a lot of holes, right? I mean, the, the, the porosity is there for the particle. Now, the gas molecules or liquid molecules have to diffuse through the pores. To, through the pores, inside the pores also, I will have some due to convection. Some due to what is called Knudsen diffusion, heard of it? And some diffusion called configurational diffusion, heard of it? Yeah, Knudsen diffusion definition is that the mean free path of the molecule should be comparable with the pore diameter, that is Knudsen diffusion. And uh, convective diffusion is the if molecule size, you know, the, the pore size will be 100, 200, 500 times compared to molecule diffusion, that means very free movement, that is convection. And Knudsen diffusion means the molecules will collide with the walls because it is almost the free the mean free path is almost same as diameter of the yeah, pore. So that's why it collides a number of times. Configurational diffusion is one molecule goes and sits in the pore, and another molecule will go and push it. That moves. Another molecule will come and push it. That means if you look in the pores when you have this configurational diffusion, you can see one molecule behind the other, one molecule behind the other. That fraction may be very, very less. All that three together is also called effective diffusivity for catalytic particles. This is for the reactor, that is for the particle alone and like that I have thousands of particles in my reactor. So, the diffusivity inside the particle and this is the diffusivity in the reactor. Even if I have packet bed, there are two diffusivities now. What are, uh, what are these two? One is between the packings, where the fluid is moving. Between the packings, you have the porosity. There, the liquid enters or gas enters, maybe turns a little bit because of the stirring. I mean, you, do, you are not putting a stirring, but because of some kind of circulations within that thing, then move, then go, again may come back. All kinds of things will happen, but that is outside the particle, but within the void edge lost totally or what? No, I think it is very clear only. No? Yeah. Then there is another diffusion and that uh, uh, liquid or gas which has entered into these interstices between the particles, that has to diffuse through the pores. Now, that pore diffusion and also you know in pore diffusion, we have again convective, uh, Knudsen, configurational, all that also will have another diffusivity coefficient very complicated if you go deeper and deeper, okay? but it is not so complicated if you want to use your brain and then try to understand, because all these things is difficult what I told you know. I have a packet bed and packet bed will naturally will have some uh, uh, interstices between the particles. So, what we are describing here is that flow, not inside the particles. But when you go to inside the particle and look what is happening to the molecules, few molecules will diffuse and when they are diffusing, they will come through convective diffusion, because large pores and diameter of the molecule is small, very happily can walk, right. Because on the road, if no one is there, the way you want, you can happily go, that is convection, right. If you go to Ranganada street now, there is one street, Tinagar, you have to go and see, particularly during uh, Diwali time, it is worse than packet bed. Because I think, you know, packet bed at least you can you have move and all that. Huh? Oh, every Sunday, eh? not a, need not be, need not be Diwali time. 
Okay. So, it is like a packet bed only. There, the movement is very, very, uh, there, you hit more number of people than you are freely moving. Notes and diffusion. Okay. <laughs> you go and hit him and he will throw you and he will go and hit him. So, like that, you know. Yeah, sometimes you may feel happy in hitting others. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, particularly boys eating girls, girls eating boys. <laughs> These are all natural. You know, we cannot avoid them. Okay. Otherwise, you know, the species will not produce. You know. So, <laughs> so all these things are there in life. <laughs> all these things are there in life. You know. Okay. So that is why uh, that is nutrition diffusion. But sometimes, in even in that road, there are some people who can walk only behind him, another person behind him, another person. If you look carefully. Husband, wife, daughter, son, all those people will be configurational diffusion. Because one behind the other very carefully they will push and then moving. But the overall diffusion when you see in the pipe, you know, a pipe means in that road, that is what is effective. Because people are finally going you know, from this end to that end. But different people are taking different routes. Some people hitting, some people trying to walk freely, some people again you know, going behind this. Same thing is happening even in the catalytic particle. Okay? So, that is what? Good. So, that is why this effective diffusivity is a peculiar word in chemical engineering can be used for different things. Okay, good. So, when I write now balance here for this uh, diagram, input equal to output plus accumulation plus reaction. This fellow is 0 and uh, I am writing here at least once let me write. Ah, okay. I see I have automatically written D E auto, that is effective diffusivity. Effective diffusivity, this is dou C by dou X. If I take this is the X direction, yeah. Plus you see, yeah, at X that is this is x and this is x plus yeah delta x okay i will explain this one later and the same terms dou c by dou x plus u c oh this has become now okay this bracket square bracket only i am putting this is x plus delta x and accumulation inside that volume will be dou c by dou t a delta x, where a is cross sectional area. Oh, sorry, where a is cross sectional area. A, a, a. Okay, good. Let me now explain. Okay, so Swami, why there are two terms here? Excellent. This is convective, this is diffusion. Okay? So, the same thing that means here because of axial mixing, right? So, I have two terms here that is convective diffusion and axial diffusion. And if I have ideal plug flow, this fellow will be 0 because d is 0, because no dispersion. D equal to that is what no? D equal to 0, yeah, no spreading P of, right? So, this term will be. Uh, is not there. So, then also we can write the balance and then try to find out for ideal plug flow. right? So, when I take this one as, as delta x tending to 0 and all that, right? Yeah, and also I have written dou c because it is a function of concentration variation is a function of two variables, yeah, distance and time. That is why that dou c has come there. right? Otherwise, sometimes without knowing we write sometimes dou c, sometimes no c. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you do not see, even though there is U C. So, <laughs> okay. All these things will be there. Okay. So, now, uh, this is going to d e dou square C by dou x square minus u dou C by dou x equal to dou C by dou t. So, this is the, this is very, very famous equation because this flow comes in many, many, many places in chemical engineering. Okay? It is simple second order. Uh, see, for most of the time for modeling, Charam Krishna, it is very good in chemical engineering. Generally, in all engineering problems, you will not go beyond second order differential equation. 
except civil engineers where they go area for bending movement you you are a true civil engineer no not environmental background and all that okay civil engineering converted to environment engineering or at least trying to do now environment environment engineering so bending movement and all that they go to even differential equation d to the power of 4 or something correct no for bending movement when you solve the problem okay there is a reason beautiful reason i have forgotten that physics because why you have to go to bending movement and all that uh, uh, you know fourth uh, fourth order differential equation otherwise in many engineering problems you will go only maximum go to second order differential equation many in in a, you take in mechanical or you take in aeronautical and all that only civil engineers have that greatness there okay good so this is the equation now so this equation we need two boundary conditions because second order differential equation and on this equation alone i can tell you there would have been at least 500 papers i'm not joking 500 papers not on this means the use of this it can be used in rotary kilns it can be used in moving beds it can be used in uh, you know uh, yeah i mean this fast fluidized beds any any many many places are flow through channels right so so many places that can be used and the boundary conditions are also one of the very important uh, discussion point right so uh, the i will come back to when when you talk about reaction but here i think leon spiel is leon spiel is in a real expert for rtd okay really i think from the beginning he liked that and then only his book gives very good information on rtd but even then that will be some kind of slight uh, confusion will be there because rtd is not that easy to grasp easily so you have to also carefully observe that good so this equation he simplifies in the sense that if this da is very very large okay let uh, uh, to start with let us say da is very very small whatever boundary condition you use you will get only one type of response so that, that means when i saw response means concentration versus time data uh, and uh, that number also he put that if d by u is equal to less than 0.01 uh, if d by u l is less than 0.01 so this is of course k uh, i think one line right yeah so in this case what you get here the response is what we want to get here is what swami is always c versus right so you will get a beautiful gaussian curve so oh, it's not gaussian the way yeah now suppose uh, slightly better so that kind of gaussian you know what is gaussian curve no beautifully spread symmetry is maintained okay exactly if you can cut in uh, and there you will have the mean also exactly at the center at the peak all those properties are there for gaussian curve so that kind of curves you get curves you get if d by u l less than 0.01 so that means boundary conditions will not be really effective there okay but the moment you go for more and more dispersion that means d by ul is greater than this point 01 then it will try to distort that means this skewness will come on the right hand side so it goes like this and then goes like that right so that's why you beautifully changed that uh, you know uh, uh, i mean depending on the boundary conditions okay the first one is for if d by l equal to no effect of bcs boundary conditions on the c versus t curve t curve one gets gaussian gaussian gau gaussian distribution gaussian distribution is also called normal distribution okay gaussian distribution or normal distribution okay so this is the kind of thing and for this there is an expression available for e theta right how do you get and all that you don't have to worry so our idea is to to find out concentration versus time diagram or a time uh, equation after solving this converting that into e t or e theta right so it is already given in the literature e theta for this case as e theta equal to 1 by 
4 pi d by u l square root is here exponential minus 1 minus theta square 4 d by u l. Yeah. So, of course, you can also convert the uh, where theta equal to usual definition t by t bar, where t bar equal to volume by volumetric flow rate or length by velocity, because this model we are using mainly, we cannot use axial dispersion model when you are very close to mixed flow, because that dispersion is too much. You will never get this kind of nice Gaussian curve, okay? that also you have to remember. So, what else is there? Theta, t bar and of course, other things we know. Yeah, good. So, that means, when I plot this, this equation, what is the parameter here? Theta, I have to plot e theta, this side, what is left there? Only d by u l. So, when d by u l equal to very, very small, let us say for example, 4 0 1, 0 0 0 1. So, you may get, yeah, this may be d by u l equal to 0 0 0 0.0001 and you may also get this may be d by u l equal to 0.201. I am just giving you know, it is enough, right. Yeah, or I may get this kind of curve or maybe on this scale d by l equal to 0.1. Just we are plotting, even though I think you know 0.01 is the limit, just to show you that you know how it can spread, right. And here, all these peaks will be same. What is this one mean? What is mean, mean here? Theta bar. And theta bar, what is the value? 1. That means, t bar by tau equal to 1. Okay? So, then how do I use this information? How I use this information is, after conducting the experiment, I will put on this curve my experimental data. I have all this, I have plotted, because I can put any number, you know, I can also go to in between point not 4 not 5, uh, so okay, 3 not 5 and also here uh, may be 3 not 2, like that I can generate any number of uh, graphs here, particularly with the available uh, computers and all that. So, then I will also put my experimental points. So, if experimental points are going like this, Ah, really beautiful curve. <laughs> really wonderful curve. So, if and then I join this, yeah. So, definitely this will tally with one of the d by l's. So, maybe here this d by l is maybe this is point uh, not 1, uh, this is point 1. So, this may be I am just giving pi not not 5. I mean, just, just to give you some value, that is all. So, like that. Otherwise, you can use many other techniques. Okay. What is the other techniques? I will give this equation into MATLAB. I will give for d by ul some guess value. right? And then ask MATLAB to match these two experimental value as well as uh, the, the theoretical value. What it does is, what MATLAB does is, so, we give the data as theta versus e theta experimental okay? and also e theta, e theta theoretical. Right? So, here e theta you have to give 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 etcetera, may be theta equal to till 10, that means 10 times mean residence time, if you have data till uh, 10. So, now what it does, first it goes to theoretical value, because theoretical equation is there. right? So, then it will calculate e theta value for a given d by u l. Right? I think those who are learning uh, MATLAB or you know this kind of uh, matching the data should know this, but to calculate uh, you know this e theta, we need definitely what is d by u l. That is why you give initial guess. Right? 
So, let us say it, you are given some initial guess as 0.01, then it, this is fixed, then only theta it will vary and then calculate e theta. So, then it will uh, yeah, calculate all those e theta values 1, uh, okay. Uh, okay, like this it will calculate all the values. You already listed out all the experimental values. So, now it will the program will take the difference between e theoretical minus e experimental. I mean that you can de define, yeah, I think uh, all that criteria you can give square and then you know it must be 0 and also what is the limit, okay. I mean theoretically 0, but no computer can handle zeros. That is where we score a point when compared to correct, no. It does not know how to handle infinity, it does not know how to handle zeros. Immediately it comes, what is that value? Ah, yeah, something like that it will come, immediately it, it, it throws up, right. So, I mean at least we are happy that we have slight intelligence than computer at that point. Good, okay. So, like that and then you give the total value that the average of all this must be 0 0.000001 or 10 to the power of minus 5 or 10 to the power of minus 6, the difference. Then it prints, yeah, okay. So, I think I have not told the other one. So, now, now this will, uh, this d by u l for 0.01 it will calculate and then checks. Then it does not know whether that is correct or not. Then it, uh, you have to give all this anyway, that will be in the program. Then it will take 0.01 I have given as a guess value. So, you have to give what is the step change in d by u l. That means, instead of 0.01, it will take 0.015 positive. And similarly, one negative value, that means 0.01 means uh, 0.95, uh, no, no, 0.095, no, 0 0.2095, yeah. So, uh, third decimal 0.5 difference, right, third decimal uh, 5 difference. Then it will see that which direction it is moving. That means, whether it is positive, that means the, the difference between these two, whether it is narrowing down when you reduce the value or when it is uh, narrowing down when it, when it when you are increasing the value. It sees only the difference between those two. Then, if it finds that by increasing the difference is uh, small, then it moves in that direction. So, then it tries, I told you 0 0.015 and it may take again 0 0.015, yeah, not 15, yeah, maybe 0 0.02 later. So, like that 0 0.025, 0 0.03, like that it goes. And finally, when you specified the difference between these two and average, overall average, because you have to give that. Then, when it is almost the value which you have specified, then it will say this is the correct d by u l value. But for that, you should have a feel. If you want to have a feel, this is the best one. At least few, few runs, you have to do the experiment and then, uh, I mean anyway, you are doing the experiment and you have to plot this and plot your experimental data with this theory and then choose the closest one that you give as the initial guess. Then the uh, optimization search is very, very fast. All of you have to do that in your MS or PhD or M tech, if you are doing a project matching experimental data and theoretical model. If you do not have your own experimental data, someone else's experimental data, at least you have to match. If you do not have your own model, so, then your experimental data should be matched with some others theoretical model.